Matt with Olympus Reptiles and we're going to start a new video series today where we're going to highlight each snake on its own video and explain what that snake means to us, why we have it, go beyond just the genetics, but show you why that snake's important to us is more than just a number. Highlight something beyond just the business aspect of it and show you the hobby aspect of it, how it came to be with us, whether we produced it, whether we picked it up, why we got it, what its name is, and just everything we have about it that kind of shares our passion for that individual animal, because to us they are all individuals. But before we do that, there's a person I want to talk about that's kind of a hero for reptiles, but you never hear about her, and that is Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. And the reason I want to talk about Mrs. Douglas, well, is what she fought for the majority of her adult life to protect the Everglades. And so by protecting the Everglades, it gave us, you know, it helped alligators, it helped all kinds of snakes, especially like cottonmouths, you know, probably eastern diamondbacks, anything that's going to be down there in that Florida Everglades and in that Florida swamp. She made the swamp a place that wasn't a wasteland through her writings, her protection of it, earning awards from uh, President Clinton even. You know, and eventually she was so recognized for her work down in Florida, you know, as this being kind of her life's work to help protect these things, that she started finding her name on buildings. To include buildings for the Environmental Agency of Florida and also one high school. And of course, if you follow the news recently, that high school has suffered a major tragedy. And I'm not going to give, you know, any time to the person that committed it because they don't deserve the time. But I want everybody to know that our hearts are going to be with those in Florida. They're going to be with those that went to the high school named for Miss Douglas. And just like her, they're going to have to fight to protect the animals, or not the animals, they're going to have to fight to protect what's important to them. They're going to be in for a long battle to get over some of that and remember the good times and get back to regular life. But that building's got her name on it. I'm sure the people that are there will also be able to fight just like she did to protect animals and protect an ecosystem to, to come back stronger than ever. And our hearts will be with you in Florida. All right, on to animals. And I thought it was fitting to start with this snake right here first. And the reason being is this is a lithia. And a lithia is just a run-of-the-mill normal ball python. That's all she is. She's not het for anything. There's nothing special about her at all. And she's just, this is your classic normal. But here's the thing. I got her when I was first starting out, even before Kurt was involved. And I'd had a few snakes already, and we were already planning on starting to breed. And I'd picked up my big pastel, who we'll do an episode on. And she was going to be my first breeder female. And I came across this girl on Craigslist, of all places. And I thought, man, if I could pick up another female, even a normal, I'd have two to breed, give me two shots, uh, kind of double my odds, that kind of thing. And I was really looking at it from a, a beginning and breeding standpoint. So I went to see her to check on her to see if this was a snake I wanted to add. And let me tell you what I found. I found a snake that overall wasn't in bad shape, but its conditions were not what I would call acceptable. It was living in a tank, and I've got nothing against tanks at all. Tanks can be perfectly fine. But this thing, snake was living in a tank. Its litter was extremely thick because rather than always change things out, they just kind of poured more in. You know, it was underneath a light, um, which is okay, not the preferred way of doing things. The house it was kept in was kept pretty cool because it was in a bedroom where the gentleman liked to sleep cool, which I understand on the same way. So it was kept around 67 degrees. The light bothered him at night, so he turned it off. So the cage was dropping to below 70 degrees at night, every night, which is also not the best way to keep them. There was, you know, some hydration issues. Just all in all, the conditions were far from perfect. I mean, was she on her deathbed? No. But was she what I wanted to see, health-wise? Absolutely not. So in that moment, that deal changed. I ended up purchasing her. And I always say I rescued her. And I purchased her for basically for the cage, and I got her with it. And then I kept her, and I got her back to health. And you know what? That first year, she didn't produce for us at all. And then the next two years, she actually has. You know, and she's actually produced some big clutches, some nice clutches. And last year, she didn't produce again. 
But here's the thing, the snake's always going to be here. Because I'll always remember the snake sitting in that cage, walking in and seeing that, and thinking, it just had the bare minimums. And I thought, it deserved much more. You know, when it was a little bit cranky when I first got her, and you can see now she's a sweetheart. And so I picked her up, and I knew when I did it that she'd always have a home with me. I never plan on getting rid of her, even though at some point in time having her take up a space in a rack will be counterproductive to breeding plants and counterproductive to making more money because it'd be better to put a two or three gene big female in there that can produce the same as she can and make me better combos, etc., etc. But it's not about that. If I parted with her, I'd always wonder what happened to her. So she'll be here until her ripe old age. And that's kind of what this series is really going to be about, is knowing these snakes as individuals. And when Alithia, that's her name if I didn't mention, it's Alithia, uh, she came to us just as Annas. I thought she deserved a better place than where she was. And I thought I could provide that. And I thought I could breed her along the way, which we've done all those things. And even though she's a, a hit and miss producer, doesn't matter. I don't have her on a pitch count like that. If she doesn't produce the next two years, she'll still be here. The next five, she'll still be here. I don't think she will. I think she'll produce for us and do fine. But basically, she's my pet. Just like a lot of these. They're my pets. They're not just only for breeding. In these videos, we talk about the business side so much. And it is important. But I also talk about passion. And it's not just passion I'll told, it's passion for every animal you have. You know, you open up, they're each an individual. And she's just, I mean, look, sweetest thing ever. Not even really head shy. Look at that. I mean, you can't tell me that she's not a great snake. and wouldn't make an awesome pet for anybody. So I've been so happy to provide her with a better environment than she had. And her babies have always been healthy. They've always been great eaters. She's never given me any problem children. And I do. I just love her. She gets the same care as any of my other snakes because it's not about her monetary value. It's about her story. Kurt, do you got anything to add about Alithia? No, she's just been a really nice snake to have around. And ever since I've you know, been involved, she's always been one that we've had. And, you know, I, I could, we could never get rid of her because, you know, we'd miss her if we ever did. And... Absolutely. She's a, part of, she's a part of Olympus as much as anybody else is. You know, she was the second adult female I had. And I don't even know how old she is. I really don't. I have no idea. It was basically a college pet for a guy is what it was. And I think it just kind of wore out for him. And his roommates didn't much care for it. So it kind of got put off in the corner. And yeah, I'll take care of that when I get a chance and, and all of that. And I mean, she was fed, but not real regularly. Not like she is now. And just, you know, now she's just this big healthy snake. She does have, if I can find it, one scar spot. There it is. I don't know what the cause of it is. You can probably not really see it. There's a bump on her. That's been on her since I had her, from before I got her. I don't know what caused it, but it's right there, probably from an old bite wound or something, where rodent was possibly left in. One of the reasons why you don't do that. That's exactly what I'm sure that's most likely from. The other thing I can always tell on her, I get her with a few other normals, I can always pick her out. And the reason I can pick her out is right here. Looks like she has a Teletubby with this weird antenna thing on her head. Boop! So she always sticks out that weird Teletubby looking alien head, then these connected ones up. So just by her pattern, I know this snake. You know, I know her when I see her with somebody else. E.T. also lives right here, complete with nose. So I, there's things on her that I can pick out because she's been mine for so long. Alright guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully you like seeing what we're going to do with each and every one of our snakes and why we have them, where you get their name, their story. And you see our passion for those animals because I think that's sometimes lost on YouTube because everybody is talking about their projects, you know, what's, what's happening, what they're doing, what they're excited about producing. And it gets so business driven and so breeding driven, which I'm just as guilty of. And I know other people who do it, they're just as passionate as I am about this too. But I think it's going to be fun to take a moment and a few minutes to share each one of our animals with you. And not just a here's a Lester Pastel, this is a Gen X, boom, boom, boom. But their story. Because they all have their story. They all have a reason we have them. You know, her first pairing was a bumblebee, just to make more spiders, pastels, and bumblebees. And she did a great job of it. 
this year we're pairing her to a banana. Hopefully we can make some bananas with her. You know, but she's more than that to me. She's more than dollars and cents, just like every one of my snakes. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and our hearts will always be in Florida.